All right, guys, thanks everybody for your patience. Tonight's attendance, 16,516, making it the uh, largest UFC event at MGM and also the largest UFC event in Las Vegas. Gate was $10.1 million, $50,000 bonuses, fight of the night, Weidman versus Rockhold, and performances of the night, Conor McGregor and Leonardo Santos. One transport tonight, Chris Weidman has been taken to a uh, local hospital to be checked out. Who's got the first question? Me. Hi, Kev. For the uh, new champion? Luke, first of all, right in front of you. Just your right. Right in front. Congratulations. Uh, you were limping. What was going on that was causing you to limp there? Uh, I kick with my left foot. Everyone knows that. I like, I like the left kick. I kicked a couple elbows and... He, I think he checked me once or something. I don't know. I was just, it hurts. It hurts, and it is what it is. Can you, um, first of all, comment what this means to you? Because you seem like you were kind of bitter from the moment you got in the UFC. Like, you felt like you weren't getting enough credit, that people weren't recognizing the ability you had. And you even said at the press conference the other day that you hadn't faced anybody as tough as Tim Kennedy and, uh, and Jacques Array. And I wonder sort of where that attitude came from, and, and do you feel like, you know, you proved any point tonight. Yeah. I've been saying it for a long time. I, I, I believed I've been the best. I believe I've been the best in this sport for a long time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people want to beat down my, my strike force accomplishments, what I did. And, you know, I, it's, uh, I, I've, I've taken my game to a new level. I said this last night and, I knew I'd come in there and, and I'd outperform him and get the job done, no matter what I faced going into this fight. And Luke, if you could, uh, at the end of the first round, you know, he was on your back a lot there. Were you ever in trouble? And then when you got the choke on him, did you feel that was in? And did you feel there was any chance of getting a submission in the first round at all? Uh, I knew I wasn't in trouble. Uh, it was, uh, I was just kind of feeling him out. On the back, I want to see his, his positioning and his pressure and, and uh, just get a little feel for the fight. Um, I had him in the guillotine. Once I, once I felt him on my back, I knew that he wasn't going to be able to advance and do anything. I, I really knew I had a big advantage there. I mean, <laughs> it's funny, and just in positions like that, you already know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the guillotine, I, I, I rolled him over. I almost had him pretty tight. That's uh, one of my famous moves there on my guillotine. Uh, Chris is a tough dude. He, he worked his way out and, and uh, hung in there. I, I couldn't believe he came back in the fourth round. Two other quick questions for you. One, your gym has now had three champions in 2015, including two current champions. Mm -hmm. What impact is training with Daniel and, and the other great uh, fighters up there, Kane and the other great fighters, what impact does that have on your performance? And then just number two, being part of this card with everything that Connor did to help build it up in, in two title fights and kind of a historic night, what do you think that does for your career going forward? And what kind of boost do you think that gives you? I'm not just saying that before, you know, as I lead up to the fights, this is an iron sharpens iron world. And you can only get so good being a big fish in a small pond. I get the butterflies every day I go into training. I got to spar Kane and Cormier. And, you know, if I'm off my game, I'm going to get beat up. And so I got to raise my level every day I come in the gym. And they got to do the same. And, and we've been pushing each other for so long. And, and that's the reason why, you know, we are where we are. Uh, I think Chris can, will potentially better himself from this, and uh, you know you, you got to get around the best people you can. Uh, that's that's the that's the name of the game. Um, I, I'm so thankful for my whole team. I think we're the, we're the best team in the world. Kane's gonna go get his belt back, and then we'll have all of them. Uh, being a part of this card, doing it here at 194, unreal. I, I couldn't even imagine a a bigger stage and, and a better opponent and. And the fight just to play out the way it did is uh, unreal, and I'm, I'm just I'm at a loss for words. This is uh, still trying to take it all in. Luke, uh, you certainly had a great win tonight, but there were some moments of adversity for you. Were there ever any moments where you thought this is just not going to be my night? No, I was uh, I was just exhausted. I've never been that exhausted before in my life. Uh, I've I've been on antibiotics the last two weeks straight. I stopped taking them today. Uh, because I was just, it was fight day. <laughs> it was my, my foot was starting to swell up a little bit, especially with the weigh-ins. I, I didn't, 
uh, I didn't take them that day. And so, you know, I was on my foot and I was so depleted and want to get the antibiotics in my body. And, uh, and my foot started swelling up and tightening up last night. I got cellulitis, basically. It's kind of like staph, I guess. Uh, but it, it takes over your whole foot and, and it's just been draining my body and it's been affecting me. And so I just, I just was going to, had to fight through it and it just, just make it happen. You know, I knew I was going to go in there. I was going to try to execute, you know, relatively early. So before that would affect me and, and, uh, unfortunately it didn't happen that quick. I, I just had to suck it up, man. It was, it's tough. It's been draining my body. So I'm glad that I got the job done and, and, uh, and go out there and perform better next time. The one controversial moment was the stand-up from the guillotine. Um, obviously, it was on the opposite side of your body, so tough to finish there. What was going through your head? Did you, I mean, did you think, okay, I understand why he's standing up, or, or, or were you frustrated at that moment? No. I mean, I could have worked my way out. It would just took a lot of energy, and, and I was so, like, focused on relaxation and, and conserving energy because I knew that I was on antibiotics and had the, the infection and everything, and so I wasn't going to do anything to exert myself in this fight. That's always, like, my main focus. I like don't fight the wrestling, flow with it, reverse it, and not, you know, overexert myself because I knew that I would I would have nothing left later on, and so uh, I was just holding position with the guillotine. I was trying to relax through it, and and it, Chris wasn't advancing, so I was like I was happy to get to stand up and just move around. So, Brother, thanks, Luke. Uh, just Dave, if I could quickly for you, certainly we would normally ask Dana, uh, but obviously you're always in close communication with him. There seems to be a lot of talk. People wonder, Connor's the big story. What's next for Connor? Is Jose worthy of a rematch after a decade without being beaten? Is Frankie hanging in the wings? And then we hear rumors that, uh, that Kavanaugh's saying that he can't get to 145 anymore. Did Dana give you any indication before he took off of what the likely scenario is next? Yeah, he laid out two scenarios. One scenario is he stays at 45 and fights Frankie Edgar. The second scenario is potentially vacating that title and then moving up and getting the next shot. Uh, following the Fox card next weekend between uh, Cerrone and Dos Anjos. So those are the two scenarios. You know Dana doesn't like to make fights on the night of a fight, but that's how he laid it out for uh, several of the TV partners backstage. Did you make any mention of Croke Park? Uh, he did not, but I imagine the uh, Irish fans who are currently parading in the MGM lobby will. <laughs> Thank you. Just one last question for you, Dave. Any indication, preliminary indicators of how this thing is trending, where this thing ranks? among the year's pay-per-views, maybe even among all-time pay-per-views? It's very likely to be the biggest pay-per-view of, of 2015, and it could be the biggest pay-per-view of all time. The metrics are off the charts. It will surpass any records we've ever done commercially. Uh, the web traffic has just been enormous, and uh, 194 has been a good week for us here. Thank you. If I just could quickly for Damien, uh, four fights in a row, it seems like you keep getting better and better every time. 38 years old, maybe fighting the best of your career. Uh, what, what's the key to your success right now? I think it's my team, you know. My team bring me the better off, out of me every time. Since Eduardo took my career, my, my manager and head coach, when I dropped to the welter, welterweight division, he's focused on, you know, give the right strategy and work. Our, our training camp is very, very methodic. We don't do things just to do. We bring guys that we need. We do, you know, every day I have the, the trainings that I got to do every day. And, and the intensity of which training, so that's make me better and better. And I'm feeling better, you know, every day. I think uh, I'm in my prime right now. And like I said, I wanna I wanna go for the title. I wanna I wanna have this chance. I truly believe, you know, from the bottom of my heart, that I can I can beat anyone. You know, I, I had nine fights in this division. I won seven fights with dominant uh, performance. You know, I won every round of the, those fights. Even you know, many fights they said. I was going to, to lose like this one. And the fight that I lost was to Hori and was fight of the night. And I won, you know, one round dominant. And the other fight that I lose, I don't think I lose against Jake Shields. Wasn't a good fight, but it, okay, you know, that's it. And he, he was a great guy. He won Robbie Lawler and he won Dan Henderson, many guys. So, you know, I think, you know, uh, I have the tools to be, to be champion in this weight category. Thank you. Just lastly, for Uriah, a uh, big win for you tonight. Are you planning on being cage side for the, for the next title fight? And uh, do you have a preference? Would you rather have uh, the old rival or would you rather have the, the old friend? Um, I would say the one that everybody wants to see is the classic story. Uh, you know, it's like a mix between Rocky IV and Rocky V. My boy Stallone actually left a voice message and uh, gave a little Rocky Balboa shout out there. And, uh, you know, I really doesn't matter too much to me. I mean, I'm not here for a long time. I'm here for a good time. And uh, fighting for the title is, is, is what my goal is. And you know, I took myself off the market for a while. And 
it's kind of a weird thing when you've been, you know, at the top of any division you've been in your entire career <clears throat> to kind of like take a back seat because of friendship and you know, that's off the table now. I've been released from the friendship. So uh I'm 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 going to I'm going to train my butt off and and I'm hoping I get that that call and and I'll be ready. And Cruz is dope. TJ, I can't relate to the guy. Um, I'm looking forward to a good fight. Uh, question for Luke Rockhold. Uh, Luke, over to your right. Um, you and, and DC are obviously very close, very good friends. I was curious, what did he say to you? He obviously, he ran right in, gave you a hug. Did he? Did, what, what kind of words did you guys exchange in there? I know you were kind of the same way when he won his title. I have no fucking idea. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You know, there's not much to be said at that point. We've been through everything together. Living in the garage and at Bob Cook's house and playing video games sitting on the floor. <laughs> it's been a long road, you know, living in the gym together. And, and uh, it's not always so glamorous, but, you know, it's uh, it's just amazing. It's, it's you can't put it into words what it, what it feels like to, from the bottom to the top, you know, it's, uh, it's an amazing thing. A lot of gold now. The silver watch has got to go. I need some gold ones. Um, obviously, you know, for the most part, you know, after the first round, it was a pretty dominant performance. You know, you won the second. Obviously, you, you, you could have finished him in the third. Most people thought it could have been over at that moment. You finished him in the fourth. But do you believe after fighting Chris Weidman and seeing what he's done, do you, do you feel like you will see him again at some point in the future? I know he's a tough guy, and yeah, I, I think he's a cut above. Uh, technically and, and obviously toughness, um, but like I said, I, I I wasn't joking when I said that before. I really believe that I'm I'll have the advantage wherever this fight goes. Every time we get in there, and, and I think he'll come back, but I'll put him right back down. You know, I got a lot of respect for him, but I, these guys aren't competing with me. I don't see anybody out there. Uh, question for for Yo Romero. Uh, Yo, congrats! Congrats on the victory, of course. Um, obviously, you know this seems like now you are the number one contender. So I am curious, a, you know, your thoughts on on fighting for the title next, and what did you think of, of Luke's performance, assuming you saw it? Mucha felicidad con ganar hoy. Thank you. Eh, ¿Cuáles son tus pensamientos en ahora que eres el número uno y qué piensas en pelear contra Luke Rockhold? <coughs> Sorry. Bueno, primeramente que ha sido el, el trabajo de muchas personas. First and foremost, it's been the job of many people. Nada se logra solo. Nothing is attained by yourself. Mis compañeros de trabajo, mi team, mis entrenadores, mis training partners. His training partners, his team, everyone involved. Mi hija, mi esposa. His wife, his daughter. Toda esta gente han tenido que ver con este resultado. All these people have to do with these results. And if I'm here, it's because I've won it. And I'm here for whatever may come. If it's for a title, I'm going to fight for a title. With the same wants. With the same focus. And the same need. And uh, a question for Uriah. You know, you, you, you stepped up in May. You fought Frankie Edgar at 145. Then you did the Ultimate Fighter. And I know that kind of came together on a short notice after everything happened with Josie the last time. You kind of put your career on hold then, too. Do you feel like, you know, you kind of got back on track where you wanted to be? You've said numerous times you want to be champion again. Do you feel like you did kind of define that tonight with the win you have and obviously the situation you know you have with, with both Dominic and TJ? Um, I'm... I, I think so, but I don't make those decisions. You know, like I said, there's a couple fights that get me real excited. That was my 41st fight, which is crazy. You know, I remember being here for some massive fights when I first started in 2003 and 2004, and and just to see it all pan out is just crazy. Um, going up to 145s, being a little bit older, I was surprised at my weight. I mean, I made an effort to get bigger, and uh, – my weight stayed up, so it was it was rough. I had some injuries going in, so I wasn't able to run this whole camp. And so I had to get my weight down, basically 28 pounds, 
uh, over the last 10 weeks. So, um, but yeah, I felt good. You know, I, I feel like, uh, you know, I'm right where I need to be. And like I said, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to hang out here forever. I just want the fights that matter, the fights that matter to me and the fights that matter to the organization and the fans. And um, I don't think there's any secret what, what people want to see. And one quick question for Tisha Torres. Uh, congrats on the win, of course. Probably, you know, your strongest performance to date in the Octagon, especially in that third round. But I'm curious, you know, you've continuously asked for top ten opponents. And, you know, even Michelle Watterson, you know, she's right on the cusp of that. Then she drops out, you get a new opponent. You know, you have a win over Rose Nama Yunus. You have a win over Paige Van Zandt. Do you feel like, you know, now at this point you deserve, you know, to get one of those fights that you just can't seem to get? Yeah, for sure. I really wanted to fight Michelle Watterson. You know, she's a former Invicta champion. I thought that was a great matchup. Um, unfortunately, she fell with injury. Um, I thought Jocelyn would be another great matchup. I think she was, but um, unfortunately, she fell short, and I felt like it was one of my more dominant wins. And, uh, yeah, my next fight, I hope I do get a top ten at least, at the very least, maybe a top five opponent, um, so I can just showcase some more of what I can do. Uh, question for Luke. To your left. Hey, congrats. Thank you. Any kind of a uh, little bit of a redemption that the, the fight seemed to, I don't want to say turn because it's not like you were losing necessarily up to that point, but the, a key moment in the fight was him throwing a spinning wheel kick. Is, is there any sort of redemption in that for you, or is you so far removed from that that, that it doesn't even cross your mind? I, I'm blessed that happened. That, that, that changed me and matured me, and it turned me into a different fighter. I embrace that. I love that. Of course, I want want revenge, I want, you know. But um, but you know, I don't think that was the exact turning point. I mean, it definitely had a, had a role. I, you know, I rocked him earlier in the fight too. Um, you know, I felt good. I felt good. I felt like I had the upper hand. You know, even even with the, obviously the setback I had. So, uh, you know, I, I wish I would have had a little more energy to to put it on him and, and be a, I'll be better next time, no doubt. Uh, and then for, just real quickly for you, Uriah, you said you uh, right here you left. You said you were hoping that you get that call to to face the winner in January. I mean, is that basically what you're expecting at this point? I mean, you know how the 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 sport works. You know, you have a history with both those guys. Are you you pretty confident in there that you have a title shot at, at 135? Um, I would be pretty confident. Yeah. I mean, really, TJ's the champ. He's been on my team for the last six years. Um, Cruz, we're one and one. And I feel like I put more of a beating on him than he did me. He he etched out some some takedowns in the fifth round and had a little higher punch count, I guess. But uh, then Rafael Sunsa was ranked above me. I have a win over him, and he has a win over TJ. And uh, I think I heard Burrell's going up. I don't know if that's true or not. But, um, you know, so makes sense to me. And, uh, you know, I'm ready for that. Question back here for Max. Uh, congratulations, eighth straight victory. <laughs> back here, eighth straight victory. You seemed disappointed with your performance in the cage. What was it about the fight that, that left you frustrated and, and not feeling like it was your best performance? Uh, you know, I fight to finish, you know. At the end of the day, I fight to finish and I want to make my case, you know, for that next title shot, you know. You got this guy going around, they got the belt that no one can uh, ha handle his left hand. If you watch back to our fight, one guy fell down and his name wasn't Max Holloway, so I'll leave it there. You heard earlier Dave say that, you know, there's two scenarios for Connor, one of them being Frankie, but one of them being going up to, to 55 and vacating that belt. If that happens, I assume Max Holloway, Frankie Edgar for a vacant title sounds pretty good to you. Look, Holloway versus McGregor to Croke Park, I think we saw that thing out, you know. You know, I, I, I actually give him, I'm the only guy to actually give him a fight. And then, uh, you know, if he moves up, Edgar versus Holloway, UFC away, you know, we can get one back for BJ Penn. Whatever happens, whatever floats his boat, whatever Dana White them want, I'm ready, you know. I'm, I'm here, I've been winning. Me and, me and Connor leads the, uh, lead the division and wins right now. So, you know, why not, uh, why not me and him? And if he leaves, then I'm glad with Frankie. Let's do that UFC Hawaii. They keep talking about hashtag, uh, they keep talking about UFC Hawaii. Let's let's make it happen. We got a stadium down there, fifty thousand plus. Let's do it. Question for uh, Dave over here. See over here, front row, to the left. Oh, there you are. Uh, is it is the fight between uh, UL and uh, Rockhold official? No. 
Uh, Rocco, what do you think about uh, UL's performance? Did you, did you get time to see it? Yeah, I saw it. Uh, it was a good. I mean, it was. I love you, well. You know, he put it. He put on it. He's a very slick cat. Uh, but he, but he, uh, he better work on his cardio because I could have staff infection all the time, buddy. <laughs> I'm gonna keep pushing this fight. So uh, you know, he's a tough dude. We'll see what happens. Um, I, I'm in for a big fight. I want a big fight. The middleweight division is in a weird place now. Uh, We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what the boss wants. I, you know, obviously, I want a big, big fight. I want, I want a fight that'll be great for the fans, and uh, we'll see. That was a, you know, it was, I'll leave it at that. And the same question for you. What do you think about uh, Rockle's uh, performance? ¿Qué piensas de cómo peleó Rockle? Fantastic peleador. Fantastic fighter. Uh, question for Luke Rockholt. Uh, Luke, were you surprised that the fight was not stopped at all at the end of the third round? It looked like it was very close to being finished at that point. Yeah, I definitely thought the fight should have been stopped. I, I was <clears throat> actually thought it was stopped. Uh, I was in between whether the round was over and or the fight was stopped. He was kind of waving it, so I was peeking over. I was hoping they would just stop the fight. I had nothing left in me, and then uh, it was quite the adrenaline jump. Uh, realizing he was coming back <clears throat> after me in the fourth, and 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 the man obviously came with it. Uh, yeah, I, I thought it should have been stopped. It, it's it's tough because you know I'm the same I'm the same guy. I want, I'm going to go out on my shield too. I want to be done, finished. But I mean, he took a lot of damage. Yeah. It's not my job. It's not my call. And one more for you, Luke. As far as what's next for you, uh, obviously we've been talking about uh, Yoel and uh, his his title prospects, but also you've got a loss to Avenge over Vitor Belfort. Would that be a fight that would interest you? And do you think he would be deserving of a title shot at this point? Vitor Belfort on a silver platter would be a beautiful thing. I would love it. I don't know if he's booked with Anderson. Or what's that? No, I don't know. No. Hey. <laughs> you all's a tough dude. I'll, I'll let the boss choose. Question for well, that fight will happen. Me and you all will have to fight. We we know this is coming. A question for Uriah Faber. Uh, Uriah, uh, you know. Coming out on top in a war like you had with uh, Frankie Signs, is uh, you, you talked about kind of taking yourself off the market for the title picture. Now you're back on. Does it help you personally to gear up for another run when you 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 have a war with a guy like Signs as opposed to you know if you you had a win tonight, but it maybe otherwise wouldn't have been a particularly memorable occasion. Obviously, this one was. Yeah, I mean, you know, when I first got the assignment against Signs, I I looked him up and. You don't really know my background in wrestling. I, I went in, walked onto a team at UC Davis, and you know became a starter there. But Sainz was a super decorated high school wrestler. Only had two losses in his high school career. He was a place in the national tournament. I knew right off the bat that I was in for uh, a tremendous war with a mentally strong, physically strong, technical guy. And um, honestly, I kept thinking in the third round, this felt exactly like, like morning sprints in college. I remember our coach would be like, one more, one more thing, you know, time mile, you know, run your fastest mile and feel like your head's going to pop and your lungs are blown out. And then he'd be like, all right, we're doing one more, one more short, short practice, day, one more thing, another time mile, you have to get within 20 seconds your last time. And I was just feeling those lungs and my friggin' head pounding. And, and uh, that's something that a lot of people aren't familiar with. It was good to get to that place because, you know, you can only get to that place on accident. You know, you don't, you don't, you don't want, like to put yourself in that position. You can try to emulate it, but it's very hard. So having a war like that with another tough opponent was very tough. And um, the other thing is, I'm so pumped about the PED testing. You know, for those who know me, I've, I've been straight and narrow my entire career, and I think, you know, I, I would like to do the ice bucket lie detector PED challenge to anybody in the top ten of the of the UFC. Let's do a lie detector test and see who's been cheating and who's not. 
And uh, I think that's going to play in my favor. And if I could finish with Dave Schaller. Uh, Dave, these last three days, don't see how they could have been more successful. Three straight nights of fights, sellouts, title changes, very compelling fights. Will we see this type of a three-night run scenario repeat itself in July around UFC 200? Well, first and foremost, Richard, it's a great opportunity to thank our staff. I mean, this was just a Herculean effort by everyone involved. We had not only our Las Vegas teams, but our global teams that supported us, and then the fighters. And one of the crazy things is all three cards, everyone made weight, everyone made it on time. Um, yes, you'll see it again. I don't know when, but you know us. We always like to outdo ourselves. And last one for you. Uh, we're used to, in the UFC, seeing compelling fights made uh, pretty quickly. Uh, and in this particular case, I'm referencing Conor McGregor. Uh, there's, there's a lot of possibilities for him, those two scenarios you just laid out. But he has told us in the media that he is on his way to signing a monster contract. Is there any chance that there could be a scenario where there would be protracted financial negotiations with Conor that could delay his return? I don't think so. No. Thanks. Guys, what we're going to do is I'm going to let this group go. Connor's about five to seven minutes away. Karen, I'll let you go ahead and have the last question. Okay, great. Uh, Damien, um, right here. Hey. Was there any frustration with getting booked on the Gunnar Nelson fight so quickly after your victory um, over Miles Jury? I mean, sorry, Ryan LaFleur. Over Magni, New Magni. Uh, Magni, my goodness, yeah, yeah, I can't yeah, yeah. remember. You guys fight so much. Uh, but it, it seemed like it, it was booked really right away, and, and I don't know if you wanted that fight if you wanted it that quickly yeah the thing it was like when they, they tried to book it that for october they asked us for october and i had a staphylococcus infection in my leg and you know when when uh, we couldn't fight which we changed for this fight which was great for me but i don't care i think you know gunnar is a great fighter he has lost just once and he asked for this fight i didn't ask you know i want to ask i want to fight i will you know i want to fight a guy that you know could put ride me to, to the title, and, but he asked for the fight, and the last actually the last fights you know everybody was asking to fight me. I went there, I did my job, I won, and it was funny. Like I said, you know, uh, I don't know how the ranking works because I won against Neil Magny. I submit him, I got the performance of the night bonus, and I still number six in the world. And after that, Magny won Eric Silva. And Magni won Gastelum. And actually, Gastelum, after Magni won him, he got two positions better, you know? And for me, I submit Magni, and, you know, I still number six. I don't know what's happened with these rankings. Mm -hmm. I think these rankings should be more uh, exact, you know? I think it would be like a mathematical form, something like that. And depends who you win, you get better. It's not just I'm wondering who is better and who's not better, because you know everybody gets influenced by the marketing and you know by everything. And you know I don't care. I know my performance were my all my performances in these weight divisions were dominant. Every time I won, you know I won with no chance for my opponents. And you know, like I said, I wanna, you know, I'm doing. Right, running for the title. I did the, at the 185, and now I'm much better fighter. I'm much better athlete, much better everything. Uh, I know I have the chance. My other question to you is, you know, Gunnar had said that he wanted to engage with you. He wanted to, to try his jiu-jitsu versus yours. This, everybody knew it would be this great grappling fight. Was there a point, though, after the first round where you expected him to just want to do a stand-up fight from there on in? Yeah, did you really I, I, believe him? You know, he, he, I really thought he wa he wouldn't go for jiu-jitsu with me. I thought, you know, he was going to start to stand up because he thought he was better standing up. But uh, for me, since, you know, I start training for this camp, my goal was to take him down. Uh, he, he did well defending. Actually, he sweep me sometimes. And the difference we are, of, of this fight is that he has a awkward, you know, stance, stand up. So it's, it's hard to train a guy like that. We bring some Shotokan karate guys to my academy to train. And also, you know, on the ground, I knew normally when I put the guys down is when the fight start getting easier for me. But with him, I knew it was going to be different. But, you know, I was able to do well. I was able to sweep, go to his back and do my job. And, you know, I tried to go to the arm, didn't work. You know, I tried to submit, but, you know, I did my best. And, 
that's it. Nice. Thank you. And lastly, real quick for you, Uriah. Um, it was kind of a tough week leading into your fight for, for Team Alpha Male with Paige and with Chad. I'm just curious your thoughts on, on Chad's loss in particular. Um, you know, just how do you feel about that? It's just, uh, it's really frustrating. I mean, you know, these four ounce gloves that anything can happen. And, and uh, props to Frankie, man. Frankie is, you know, he's the guy that doesn't quit training. He doesn't stop progressing. He doesn't take time off. And um, that could have been anybody's exchange. And he, he, he clipped him in a, in a real strange way. It was just right on the, like, nicked his upper lip and, and put Chad down. Which is, is sad for Chad because, uh, I mean, there's a lot of buildup. I mean, after you saw how he was on two weeks' notice with Connor, you know, stepping in there, his fight with Aldo, um, you know, Chad, people are going to be jumping out of the weight class and doing this and doing that. I would love to see Chad stay in there and uh, get another shot with, with, with Frankie coming up or um, do something big. And it was, you know, I was thinking about that in my fight. I need to get morale up, and it was motivating for me. I mean, that's one of the coolest things about being a part of a team is it's, it's more than just you. It's somebody, you know, you have a family, you have a support system, and, yeah, it was rough. And after your guy won the Ultimate Fighter, can you admit that you actually like Connor? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like Connor. <laughs> Connor's a good guy. We actually we had, we had some good times in Vegas. Uh, you know, not that he can't get on your nerves, but uh, I, I enjoy I enjoy his mindset. He's he's a he's a special guy, and and uh, man, really really feel for Aldo. What a great champion. You know, hopefully he gets his chance. I mean, I think Frankie's up next, but hopefully he gets his chance for redemption. But um, man, can't argue with Connor, dude. The Mystic Mac. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we'll be back in a few minutes with Connor. Thanks, guys. Staying in Cali. Here. First and foremost, Connor, congratulations on the cover of EA Sports, and uh, I'll turn this press conference over to you, sir. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for coming here. I'd like to thank, on behalf of myself and the promotion, uh, thank all the media members for all the work that they put in. We are extremely grateful. Um, tonight was a phenomenal night. $10.1 million gate, the highest pay-per-view of the year. We done it again. It's been a great year for myself, my team, my family, the promotion. I'd like to congratulate the UFC, all everyone at the UFC that puts in all the hard work behind the scenes. Again, extremely grateful. Um, any questions? Yeah, Connor. Connor. Yeah. Over here. Where? Right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How are you, sir? How are you? Good. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, I was asking you on Thursday about his right hand. Yeah. Can I tell you what you told me? I said his right hand would get him into trouble. It's the shot I predicted. I said he'd overload on his right hand. I said I'd slip. I said I'd bang the left hook. Uh, left hook. And that's what happened. Word for word, you said, I felt when we stared down I felt his right hand was twitching, which was a subtle tell for me. He is ready to unload that right hand, and I feel that could be a downfall for him. If he lets that right hand go, I will not be there. I simply enter the way I enter, and that is enough. They either overextend or they shrink away, but either way, it is not good for them. I will create traps and dead space inside that octagon, and I, I will walk him into that dead space, but all of a sudden, he will be in danger. How do you do that? How do you I mean, predict these if things? you can see it here, 
and you have the courage enough to speak it, it will happen. So I see these shots, I see these sequences, and I don't shy away from them. A lot of times people believe in certain things, but they keep to themselves. They don't put it out there. If you truly believe in it, if you become vocal with it, you are creating that law of attraction and it will <clears throat> become reality. I knew he would overextend and I knew I'd catch him. So Mystic Mac strikes again. Uh, the other thing we talked about was uh, innovation <clears throat> and about the idea that something will go as far as it can go and it will sort of get to an end and everything will be the same and then somebody will have to innovate and change that. Was he the best taxi in the world and are you Uber? Um, now, you know, he, Jose is, has been a phenomenal champion. Um, it would have been nice if the contest had stretched out a little bit longer just to, just for all that's, it's been through, but I still feel the same process would have happened. Timing beats speed, precision beats power, and, and that's it. So um, I respect Jose. I wish him well. Um, but now we are on to the next chapter. And, and last question, Connor. Uh, is the new thing that you're innovating just some kind of... How do I look up here, first yeah, of all? you look good, sir. I think it suits me, right? Yeah. I think I look good up here. And are you innovating a weird combination of confidence and movement? <clears throat> um, I've always been fascinated by movement and, you know, I always look at people that can move in, 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 in unusual ways and have complete control of their frame. I don't see them as people that just have control of their body and control of their frame, but they have control of their, mi their mind. To be able to go into certain positions and balance on one hand or in in unusual positions, to be able to do that, you don't just have control over your body, you have control over your mind. So it's always been something that's fascinated me. Um, and I've always been learning and trying to implement different forms of movement and variety into my game. Um, we brought in uh, Mr. Ido Portal this week, fight week. He came maybe a month ago. Uh, we trained for a couple of days, but then fight week was perfect because the hard training is done. You, it's about it's about entering the contest fresh. Your body supple and free. Fight week is not about. It, it's already a stressful week. It's already a lot of struggle in, in, in fight week. But you must make it at as least amount of that as possible. So, bringing Ido in this week was phenomenal. It, it, it recentered the mind. It changed the training. It was movement based. There was no contact. When I woke up today. I didn't wake up and say, I didn't wake up and my brain wasn't telling me that my foot is sore or something. You know, that's what a lot of times happens to these fighters. They come in and say, when they wake up on the day of the fight and their, their brain is instantly telling them about their elbow or about their knee or about their ankle or something's wrong with them. This time I woke up and there was absolutely nothing wrong. I was like, f I felt free, in control and, and free. Uh, question over here, Connor, to your right. There you go. How are you? Uh, very good. Congratulations, of course, on a phenomenal victory. You predicted a first-round knockout, and obviously that happened, but in your wildest imagination, <clears throat> did you imagine it would be one punch, I mean, that quickly? Did you have any scenario in your head where it would play out like that? Yeah, many times. I've. Uh, it's not the first time I've done that. I have a four-second KO not, uh, on my resume. I have a... Now I have a 13-second. I also have a 16-second. I have many early stoppage wins. Um, I feel... I have the shots, and I have the timing, and I have the precision. And again, with these small gloves, and with the correct amount of force and the correct timing, the human chain can't take it. So um, that was, I said, one round. He is the pound. He w was currently the pound for pound number one fighter on the roster, undefeated in ten years. The company's only featherweight champion. Who comes in and predicts one round KOs? I did. And I did. Do you think, I mean, you know, if this fight had gone the full one round and let's say there were some good exchanges, maybe he got you with a couple shots, you know, even a first round fight, you could say we could justify an immediate rematch. <clears throat> do you feel like you will see Jose again or do you feel like this may be the last time you see him? You know, that's, that's on him. That's up to him, up to him what, what, what way he goes about his, uh, his next step. I feel maybe he could take a step back, recenter himself, take all that. Because you don't understand, like I said before, and I've said many times, they, it's, it's not the same when you sign to fight me. There's a whole other 
It's a whole other ball game. It's a completely different pressure bubble you're under. And he felt that. A guy that's been on top so long, 10 years on the feed, oh, the company's only champion. But he felt the pressure like he'd never felt before. That's because he was facing me. But what happens is when they, they show up and they face me and they, they man up and do it, they become re-energized. Look at Holloway, look at Poirier, look at all these people. When they show up and they come through it, they become better individuals. So I think Jose should go back, regroup, maybe get back in line for a number one contender spot, and, and, and we'll go from there. I know the option is there for the 155-pound belt. I'll sit and I'll watch this. Um, the options are there now. The options are building. We've got Frankie, who, who had a good win last night. Um, that could be for the featherweight belt. Um, maybe Jose rematch or 155 pound strap. So I, I, I enjoy options. You know, options are a good thing in the fight game. Your coach, John Cavanaugh, that's a perfect segue to my next question, said that, you know, this was the last time you were going to cut to featherweight, but it is a big cut for you. And you were interested. And Dana said, if you, you know, if you want that lightweight title fight, you know, if you go up, you could have it. Where, do you have a preference? I mean, how bad is that cut? How bad was the cut this time? And does that... I mean, I, I, I giggle all the time because every time I step on that scales and I step off the scales, everyone's like, it's the worst I've ever seen him. He, he, he better rehydrate correct or he's in a hell of a lot of trouble. Don't get me wrong. It's a tough weight cut. But tell me one time I've missed it. Tell me one time I've not showed up the next day fresh. You know what I mean? Everyone up there on that stage is that makes weight is, is, is not in the freshest of states. You know what I mean? This is, this is the business. But this, this time around, although it was tough, I'd done it professionally. I couldn't know corners. I had a, a guy in that was helping me with, with, with the structure of it, and I trusted in the structure and in the plan, and the weight came on me. Is it easy? No, but I get it done like a professional. So although I said I would not, I, I was considering, I wasn't considering leaving the featherweight uh, division for good because I am the unified world champion. This is my division. I say what I do now. So maybe I feel there's a couple of contenders in the mix. Let them maybe compete against each other while I go up and take the lightweight belt. Allow a contender to emerge and go back down and take out that contender and then go back up after a lightweight contender has emerged and take out that contender. That was what my career path, I felt, was taking shape. Now, Frankie had a good win yesterday, or yesterday, so he could probably climb up as a con an early contender already. So um, we've, we've some options. We've some decisions to make. Um, but most certainly, I'm looking to replicate what I have achieved in my previous promotion, a two-weight world champion held consecutively. I said I would do it, and I will do it. And my last question, you know, Jose Aldo, you said it. Everyone said it. Number one pound-for-pound pound fighter in the sport. You knocked him out in 13 seconds. In your head right now, Connor, are you the number one pound-for-pound <laughs> pound fighter in the sport now? I believe so. I believe there are many great fighters. There are many people who do great things. But when you combine it all together, when you combine the whole package, the whole animal, that is the fight game, I don't think there's nobody that does it better than me. I think I am the pound for pound number one. Uh, over here, Connor. Um, do you consider this your first title defense, or do you look at this as now you're the champion, the real champion the whole way? I don't, I, um, yeah. I, I, I felt like I was always competing for the belt. Like I said, two weight world champion I came into this promotion as. So in my mind, I was defending my belt on the debut and every other fight. So it's nice, you know, they, they, lay, they, they called it a fake belt, interim toy belt, clown, joker, all of these things. So I'll go back and I'll sit patiently and wait and hear what they have to say now. And the last thing I was going to ask you is, is there a, any obligation that you feel, I guess, you, you came in and you sort of galvanized this division and really made it, I think, what it is now. And now that you've got, the, now that you've beaten Jose and you're the guy, and uh, in the crosshairs of anybody coming up, and especially like Frankie, do you feel an obligation at this point on any level to kind of stick around for a little bit, or is it? I tell you one thing that won't be happening. If I go up to that lightweight division, there's no way in hell that I'm vacating my belt. That's not happening. 
there'll be a belt on one shoulder and a belt on the other on the other shoulder. I understand why previously they would have fighters do that because many fighters don't fight as frequently as I do. Tell me how many fights I've had in the past year. You know what I mean? I, I'm busy. I stay active. I'm fresh. So when I go up to the lightweight for that lightweight belt and take that lightweight belt, I will still be the featherweight champion also. So I will be a dual weight champion. There's no going up and vacating. The belt, the belts will still be active because I am active. I am as active as any of them. So there's no problem with that. So there's no vacating. That's not happening. Connor, you famously proclaimed that you were going to be here. Uh, you've seen it happening. You knew what was coming. But you know, you've been carrying the nation of Ireland on your back. All these things. Now that you're here and you actually got it done, have you had a chance to soak it in a little bit? What is the emotion? I tell you what, I've been soaking it in all week. I, uh, on that way in yesterday, I wanted to stay on the stage. I smiled and I just took it all in and just looked. I took my, an extra second. The same way out there, I just looked down and said, this is my home. I feel at home here. And all through the week, I'm watching videos of the Irish going crazy throughout Las Vegas and all these videos that are popping up, the Q&A that they've done with Holly and all. I mean, the, the Irish fans, you can't beat them. We are making this sport what it is today. And to be given my countrymen um, and women, these these occasions that they'll remember forever and the fact that they're doing us proud out, out here and the whole world uh, the eyes are on the irish right now the whole world is looking at our country so i'm very very proud of that and i'm very very grateful this guy has been kind of your bitter rival for the last year i mean there's been such a build up after it was over it seemed like you were pretty cordial and you were trying to speak to him what were you trying to say to him you know they there's a lot there was a lot of stuff said different you know what I said was, I says, look, we can go again. You don't like this. I don't, although it was an, it's a nice feeling to get that knockout, it's, it's kind of not nice as well. You know, you can see what's happening around, and it's you don't want to see a champ, uh, uh, the current or the, the, the only champion in the, in the company's history going out like that. So I had a little moment where I felt sorry for, for Jose. Um, it's been a long road, and I, I appreciate that he showed up here um, and, and made the, the, the journey out here. Because um, I have no doubt, I'm sure there were options to pull, and this time he, there were options to pull like the last time, but this time he stuck around, I'd imagine. So I, I just said we can do it again, but he was off in his own own world, I believe, and they are still, they are probably still resentful and, and bitter towards it. But like I said, winners focus on winning, losers focus on winners, and that's what their whole camp have been doing this whole time. They've been focusing on me and what I've been doing and what I've been saying. But I've also been focusing on me and what I've been doing and what I've been saying. That's what winners do. Winners focus on winning. Losers focus on winners. Not a lot of the fight to break down, but can you help us understand your emotions, your mindset? I mean, this is, this is a big thing that you've been building towards that 13 seconds that unfolded. What was going through your head? And I mean, did you see things playing out? Was it just muscle memory, instinct? How did it all play out? I just felt he'd load up. I'd give him a little shot, give him that pressure, almost like get that recoil. And then he loaded. I pulled, banged the left hand. It was clean, no power, no push, just pop. Precision, timing, that's it. You, you, you fall into a shot like that, and you go to sleep. And last question for you, Connor. It doesn't sound like the weight cut is going to factor into your decision. So how will you make the decision of what the next movie is? Is it, is it about who wins at 155, which matchup sounds more interesting? How will you make that choice? I'll give it some time. I'm still here, and I'm all, I'm all, you know, it's Christmas. I'm, I'm thinking right now Christmas. In the fight game when you travel around for so long and you, you're, you're either making weight or you're doing something, but Christmas is taken from you many times. This time Christmas is not taken from me, so I get to go home. I've, been, I've put in a hell of a lot of work this year. It's been a crazy, crazy year for me. Uh, so I'm looking forward to going home, building a Christmas tree with my girlfriend, Spending time with my family, eating some good, good food, um, and let the plan form. It will form before me, so I'll keep my ear to the ground and see what people are interested in the most and make a decision then. Once again, congratulations, Connor. Sorry. Congratulations, Connor. I'm in the last month, you've had Ronda lost. That she was a 20-to-1 favorite undefeated champion. Tonight, Chris lost. He was an undefeated champion. Jose hadn't lost in 10 years. What does that say to you about now that you're on the top and everybody's going to be shooting at you? Does that give you any caution or any pause that you have to consider? Again, 
winners focus on winning. Winners focus on what they can control. I, I keep, you keep getting asked, um, did you learn anything from Ronda or did you learn anything from other people? But although I learned from watching the contest and the technical aspect of it, I focus on me and what I'm doing. So um, I don't, I feel at the top. I already felt at the top before tonight. So um, I'm confident going forward that nobody can take what I bring. What do you feel from a business standpoint is possible? I mean, you know, there's always been this thing when you talk about MGM, you know, gates are six, seven million. Those are huge gates. Now tonight you did 10 million. 10.1. Uh, even da <laughs> and even Dana said the other day you couldn't get over nine and now you did 10.1. What is possible in terms of where you take this thing in, on from the business standpoint? What, did, what did Floyd Money do? Sorry, say it again. What did Floyd Money do? Four, they're at 4.6 million. No, that was bias. I'm talking about gay. Oh, 72 million gate. 72 million gay. We done 10.1, I'm catching up. I'm only 27. Them old motherfuckers are 40 before they got that on. I'm only warming up. So I said to Lorenzo and I said to Dana, I'm bringing these big numbers. I'm bringing these half a billion dollar revenue numbers like the Mayweather Pacquiao fight done. So at 27 years of age, I stand here as the unified world champion back-to-back -back gate records in the MGM. This is trending as the highest pay-per-view. Schaller, I believe, said of all time for the UFC. So at 27 years of age, with every record in the book, with weight divisions above ready for me to, be, to go at super fights left and right, tell me, tell me one other champion that's been like that. Every other champion gets a belt and they don't want to go up or they don't want to go down. I'm going straight up, so I'm bringing these big numbers, and the sky is the limit. And I guess just in, in that vein, you know, when you think of the Mayweather-Pacquiao fight, it was because it was six years. People wanted to see mm. that for such a long time. There was some hook to it, and it would seem to me like the dual championship would be the hook for you to be able to kind of get that, mm. that type of thing. Um, do you feel like that is it, or is there a specific opponent that, you know, people may think that will be more than just the – the hook of say another title. Yeah, I've, I've, well, there's many there's many ingredients to form that what it was, um, but like I said, 27 years of age, we can, this can happen. Anything can happen. I could go up unified, or I could go up and take that lightweight belt. Maybe Jose make a run back, and maybe people want to see that again, and it just builds and builds, or you know, things change and things grow in the fight game. So um, these these hooks appear, and. We capitalize, and that's that's what we do here at the UFC. All right, Connor. Once again, congratulations. Uh, this was not only just you know you winning the title, but with 13 seconds, this beat Ronda Rousey's 14 seconds for the fastest UFC title fight ever. Uh, how do you respond to that? Was that is that something that you thought about when it happened, or is this? I certainly time? didn't think about that when it happened, but I do enjoy the numbers. <laughs> I make no secret of that. I do enjoy breaking records, so I'll add that to my list of broken records. And this was a great night for you. Unfortunately, this week hasn't necessarily been as great for some of your teammates. Gunny Nelson, it didn't go his way. Same with Artem Lobo. Mm. What did you think of their fights, their performances? You know, I was absolutely heartbroken watching the watching Gunnar fight there. He's so, you know, there's so much to do with the game now. It grows, and there's a lot more to it. He 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 experiences forced more extreme weight cut as well this time because he's he's naturally grown into the welterweight division. So there's many factors in it, um, but that wasn't that wasn't the true Gunnar Nelson out there. You know, he's 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 there and he has every shot and every movement in the book. It's coming. It's coming for Gunnar. It was very very sad to watch that. I you know you have to give respect to Damian Maya. I feel the early exchanges were more. Of what Gunnar is capable of, uh, Damien had that body lock, Gunny had the overhook, and that little foot lock trip, and ended up in top position. It was some. It was a beautiful fight. Hats off to Damien. Gunnar will be back. Um, he'll grow with it, like like he did previous. So, um, the Artem fight. I mean, Artem has been with me from the beginning. Also, what he done in the Ultimate Fighter House after being with me in Las Vegas for the last camp, the win back to back to back KOs. Um, to watch that fight play out as well was very, 
was very upsetting because it wasn't truly a fight. I mean, if you beat a guy, beat beat a guy, you know. But respect to Ryan as well. Um, it wasn't. It was a great weekend for myself. It was a mixed up and down uh, weekend for my team. But as my coach says, we win or we learn. So we will learn. We will head back to the gym. We will enjoy every sequence that happened over the course of this weekend and learn and grow from that and add to it and implement these lessons in our game. And just final question. Uh, like you said, you want to keep your eye on the title fight between uh, Dos Anjos and Cerrone. Who do you see coming out on top in that fight? Uh, you know, I don't know. I haven't even given it a second thought. It doesn't really It doesn't really matter. I'll, 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 again, I'll keep my ear to the ground. I'll see see what kind of numbers we're talking. I mean, it's not even a pay-per-view card, so the, the division is struggling big time. Um, the division needs me. I don't need the division, so um, I'll play it by ear and see. But I am emotionless to who comes out victorious. Connor, your people are so important to you. What was it like for you, you know, at the introduction, right before the, the, the fight started and hear, hearing the support? And then also... Do you don't you want to take a fight back to Ireland? I mean, if they offer me a Crow Park, or if they offer me the football stadium, you're damn right I'm gonna take it. Can't you demand it? Maybe I can these days. Maybe I can. But like I said, I'm gonna sit back in the shadows for uh, for Christmas and plot, and then I'll come back in the new year with something for you all. The importance of your people, though, tonight. I mean, I am extremely proud of my nation and extremely grateful for all the people that come over here and travel for me. I mean, like I said, the, the fans all week have been amazing. The whole world has seen the Irish and the support they have for, for myself and each other. Um, and that we are good people. We just like to have a good time. No trouble. We just want to have a good time. And uh, it's, it's great to see my nation on the map. So I am very proud of that. Thanks again for everything. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, last question. <laughs> Connor mentioned the fans from Ireland several times. What do you think the strip's going to be like tonight, and, and how, do you, how do you plan to celebrate? <laughs> uh, the strip will be green, white, and orange, my friend. Uh -huh. I, I have an after party now at the SLS, so I'm going to go have some steak with my family, a little bit of food, and then I'm going to uh, celebrate with my fans who are at the after party little drink or two and then just just rest for the night and then see what tomorrow brings um but it's been a great year for myself the promotion i'd like to congratulate and thank everyone involved and i'll see you again in the new year thank you so much